delayed. So there is a chat that you can use if you have any questions. So we are going to get to our first topic. And so I just wanted to say thank you everyone for being here. Um, we know there's a lot of new drivers here. Um, a lot of drivers have a lot of questions. They want the pointers. They want to know how to make the most money. They want to know how to stay safe. And so what our first topic, we're going to break the ice and get the mood right and just have everything laid back and chill. So our first topic is going to be what is some of the craziest things that have happened to you doing gig work? So if people want who are on Facebook Live or who are on YouTube want to participate, because guess what? We are we love audience participation. You know, the person in the audience with the craziest story to share, we're going to vote on. They're actually going to win a twenty five dollar twenty five dollar um $25 Visa gift card. And you know what? Gas prices, hopefully, what would that get you? Like, I don't even think that'll get you half a tank of gas and these gas prices, but it'll get you two thirds of a tank of gas, okay? You could treat yourself to a decent lunch with that. And so we really do value, uh, we really do value participation in this. So... Who wants to go first and share the craziest story that happened to them doing rideshare? Who would like to go first? Any takers with that? And then I just ask if you can be on camera, if you could please be on camera, but if you're driving, we respect that and we want everyone to stay safe. Okay, Paul said no video. And thanks, Paul. So we got that covered. Hopefully we got the bugs fixed. We have a fellow driver here, you know. He said he's watching the show. He's here. Thanks for your support, Marky. Big up to you. And Will says he's new, but he's but he's curious. He's here. So Will, I don't know if you could put in the chat. He's tuning in on Facebook. Can you please share with us one of your craziest stories? And we'll actually we'll actually post it on the chat. So since there's no takers, I'm 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 surprised because usually Steve is always itching to say something. You know, Steve, you don't have anything to say tonight. You don't have anything to say? Okay. Well, I guess this. I guess ladies first. I guess I'll go first. Okay. I'm just changing my camera out really quickly because I do not like... I just want to keep it 100% real. The blur is blurring my whole face out, and I want you guys to be able to see my face. Okay. All right, now. That's a lot better. So one of the craziest things that happened to me, and it was really scary, was I actually picked up a male passenger. It was kind of later on in the night from downtown Boston, and he was going to some town I've never even heard of in Northern Massachusetts. It was out in the middle of East Bum. You know what it was. And I swear he was, you know, I wasn't trying to look, but I swear he was pleasuring himself in the back of my car and just asking all sorts of inappropriate, all sorts of inappropriate questions all sorts of inappropriate questions right now. So I just wanted to share that in another crazy story. We'll see one of the comments is, Will said he's had a passenger 
offer him drugs, but he declined. And he said, oh my God, yeah, that's what it's like. And even, yup, he's had a passenger. Will's had a passenger hit on him. So it's just not the ladies that have to deal with this garbage. You know, the men have to deal with this stuff too, which is really, really, really crazy. And so Marquis said he picked up a nun before, but the pickup spot was in some deep wooded area. It was in a KKK area, I believe. And Marquis also said, I don't know if it's a crazy story, but you know, and he said he's been tipped, a passenger tipped him with marijuana one time. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Um, you know, that's just one of the craziest stories that I had. And he was asking me, did I want to come inside? You know, like it was a Tinder date or, you know, I don't know what's wrong with some of these people, you know, but that's really, really, really crazy. And so Steve, you want to go next? I'm going to unmute your mic. What's the craziest story that's ever happened to you? Sure, it's Steve or me. Oh, I guess you could go, Dave. Let's go, Dave. Dave Dave is unmuted. What's the craziest story that's ever happened to you while doing rideshare? Um probably probably a lady saying she could um make it okay to the car and uh not really making it okay, falling down with a skirt hanging up and uh, <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess that's craziest, <laughs> but she's, um, she eventually made it to. Uh, Did you help she, her up? Yeah, well, she didn't want me to touch her at all. And her husband was out there with a the kid watching her. She went to some event and she oh, wanted wow. to be at all cool and sophisticated and <laughs> she fell in the cobblestone and, you know. Then another one just blacked out. She hit, fell, hit her head, and I called the cops. And she woke up, got up, walking inside, and said, "I don't need any help." Oh wow! So I've had a bunch of crazy stuff. Wow. A lot of false accusations, accusations, and they shut you down for nothing. Oh, what that. happened with that? Tell us, a, give us an example of that because that's been happening to a lot, a lot of drivers. You know, uh, I was going out to Star Drive, and this motorcycle decided to um, try to pass me on the right to keep on going up Beacon Street, and he mm -hmm. tried to pass me on the right. He hit the car, and I pulled over to the side. He kept on going. And I don't know how he survived, but he survived and just kept on going, never reported it. And they shut me down, lift shut me down while they investigated it, which was like a whole weekend of concerts. I lost a lot of money in that deal. And they never got the operator. So, I mean, just it's, they don't really, they don't really cover you. You know, they cover themselves. They don't cover you. That is so true. So the craziest customer complaint that I've had, besides when I change my hairstyle, someone saying it's not me, I can honestly say I was doing a lift, a lift line, you know, that's lift line, Uber pool, but it was a lift. And I've always had the most issues with Lyft when it comes to these passengers. Uber, not so much, which is weird. Usually the drivers have more problems with the Uber passengers than the Lyft passengers. And that's when they were given like $15 for, you know, for three streaks. So you get an extra $5 bonus, a ride, plus yeah, shared rides and stuff like that. Yeah. And so let me tell you, this woman got in my car and she smelled like B.O. onion style, like on steroids. It was crazy, 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 crazy. And I was doing a pool. I, it was raining outside. I didn't care. I cracked my windows. Cracked my windows. I didn't care that some of the rain was coming in. And then when I picked up another passenger, the passenger garden, 
And you know, she smelt the funk too. And so the passenger reported me as being the funky one. And mind you, I keep a toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, wipes, paper towels, hand sanitizer, like Lysol wipes, all of that because I used to drive a lot of overnights. And so, you know, sometimes I would go to the airport bathroom or the bathroom at the hotel just to brush my teeth, just to wash up because I can't stand smells. And so Lyft sent me a message about my body odor and I had to respond to that. I was, you know, I don't know how the passenger thought it was me and not the other passenger. I said, let me tell you something. And I took, I was like, um, I keep all these things, all these toiletries in my car. So that was just a really, really, really bad experience for everyone involved in that. And that they thought I was the one that smelled like that, which is cray, cray. So that's crazy. And Will is saying, yikes. Yeah, so I don't know if some of y'all have ever gotten accused of being you know, false accusations. But Steve, can we hear from you? You uh, want to hear from you now? About yeah, your crazy finally, story? I've been having technical difficulties. Um, yeah, I, I've been uh, accused of quite a, quite a few things, actually. Um, I had one, one person say that I was fighting with somebody because they cut me off. And all I told them was just to use their blinker. And the lady said I'd gone into a fight with them and everything. And um, just some crazy ones. I, I, there's just too many. So, so that's the craziest one? Oh, I've, I've had, I got plenty more. I just don't feel like talking about them. Okay. Well, we'll not. Yeah, Will said that that happened to him a long, long time ago with Lyft, and that is a scary situation. So, Felipe, do you have anything you'd like to like add to this? Is yeah, are we talking about the craziest thing that ever happened to us? Yeah, while well, being yeah, a well, yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 I, was, I, I never really told, like, the party nights and the drunk people around, but the only thing that really got me is when I first started, I was doing Uber and it was Uber pool and I didn't do much Uber pool in Boston. And I had this lady and oh, she was telling me, she was telling me to do all the shortcuts. Like she was going, go down here, take this left, take this right, take this right, take this left. And I'm like, and I was just doing it because I was new. You know, I was, I was new. I just, just did the pool. One mile. Hold on one second. West, I just, I just did, I just did the pool. West, I, Atlanta. I, I just did the pool. Then keep left. So um, I remember the lady took me down. You know how you go from Cambridge over to Mass Ave Bridge on Boston? Yep. She made me take a left over there, over the bridge in, in the Boston side, and go down like the side. It's one of those side streets. And this is a pool. She's dating. She's got, they got leftovers. Her and her boyfriend, you know. She's in there. She's telling me where to go, uh, how to drive, where, where to go. I hit a pothole. And I just ended up like saying, like, you got to get out of my car. Like, I was so pissed. It was like I, I first got the car. I just got the car. And uh, I was just so pissed. I just got her out of the car. And uh, nothing ever happened. Augusta. And it, that was like the craziest thing. Other than that, I mean, I've always had good rides. Uh, uh, very, very easy, you know, no problem. So, no crazy rides for me except for that. Just uh, being bossed around by a lady and a boyfriend in a pool ride and uh, in a <laughs> That's it. That's how exciting my life is. Are you on your way to Augusta, Maine? Yeah, you can say that. Have fun. It's a nice ride up there.
Yeah, that's that's so crazy. And I put in the chat, you know, we call Uber pool, Uber stool. And, you know, like Felipe said, he's new because in the beginning, you, cool. you were supposed to go the way that they told you to go. Correct. They try to, Correct. They try to control you. But then I started to, I'm like, wait a second, why are they trying to get me to get stuck in traffic? If I go over here, I won't be stuck in all this traffic. And then they did like the $3 extra bonus and you could get unlimited bonuses. That's when like the bonuses were like, you can get five, like a hundred peak time Nobody rides was $500. I was like, nah, F you Uber. I'm going over here because yeah. Waze is telling me this is a lot less traffic than stay in the way you want me to. I'm in this to win this. I'm in this to make some money, honey. That's me. And so I I hate Uber stool and I hope they don't bring it back anytime soon. I heard from someone, a driver in Florida, that they have um that they have, you know, that they done return Uber stool in the lift line in Florida. So that really, really, really There's really, several really, cities really that are bringing it back. <clears throat> There's several states that they brought it back in. It's all, all the ones who are like hardcore Republican. Mm -hmm. That's the states they're all in. Yeah, okay. that's that's too bad. Yeah, so the only exciting one that I had was uh, that first Uber pool. After that, I never let anybody boss me around. Uh, like I said, I was new. I never liked to go to Boston. I always did the burbs uh, and the airport <laughs> runs in the morning. But uh, mm -hmm. that's the only crazy thing that have happened to me. Boston's only good for the high surges. That's it. Any other yeah. time? Any other time? Not worth it. Yeah. So now we're gonna go to our next item. So number two, which is, you know, we are going to be giving tips for rideshare, DoorDash, Grubhub, Instacart, and Amazon in Amazon success. That's what we're going to do. And so <laughs> and so we're going to start I guess we'll go in alphabetical order and so I guess I'll 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 start first. So the tips I have for Lottie Daddy everybody get a dash cam. Get a dash cam. Get a dash. Get a dash. Oh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> it's a get a dash cam, okay? And, um, you know, DoorDash, especially if it seems to be a little bit shady, you know, take pictures, Grubhub, take pictures, Instacart. Oh, my goodness. You know, sometimes it's like you got to take a picture because these customers, you know, these customers will say they never got a food item. I just got that recently twice now on, on mm -hmm. Amazon. There is, uh, somebody saying, oh, I never got my grocery order. We have to take a picture when we deliver the damn thing. Yeah, sometimes you have to because when I was, you know, doing that Amazon grocery order, yep, we had to do that. And get a pulley. So if you're doing Instacart or you're doing a Whole Foods grocery shopping and stuff, or now that you could do, you know, Uber, um, you could do groceries now. All of these other services are adding groceries. Get one of those pulleys. I have one that can fold up really well. That's another tip that one of my girlfriends, she's like the Instacart queen. She, but she couldn't be on here tonight. She said, get get one of those dollies, those easily portable dollies that you could fold up because you never know when you're gonna get a big order. Shop for your frozen items and refrigerated items last. That's also another important tip. If you're doing Instacart, get you, get you and even Uber Eats, get you some hot, some cold bags, you know, that's what you want to do. Um, you really want to do that. And get your hired. And another tip I could give you for Amazon with the food deliveries. Don't go to that one in Chelsea. Oh, I went there. I think I went there twice. Never again. I always started to do Whole Foods in Dedham. I live in Dedham, by the way. And let me tell you, I would always sign up for the last shift, which was at eight o'clock. And even when I was doing Amazon with the packages, I stopped doing packages around the holiday times. Always sign up for the last shift. <laughs> 
because that's what you're probably going to get the least amount of groceries and the least amount of packages. And it's not going to be as busy when you sign up for the last shift. Um, but, the, but the only problem is that um, you're going to run into places that are closed. They don't shut down a lot of these apps. So you go to these places and they're closed already. Yeah, I'm talking about specifically for the Whole Foods, deliver the grocery delivery orders. That's what I'm talking about when I say sign up for the last shift because oh, okay. they don't give like now. I mean, they used to close at 10 before the pandemic. The one by me closes at nine. So if you do the eight o'clock shift, a lot of times it's the groceries or orders that they couldn't deliver. And it's usually a lighter load. I walk by there and I see people. Oh, my goodness. They have like, oh my gosh, they have like, they got two shopping carts full of groceries and it used to be so easy. It was like a secret weapon. And Will is saying, oh, Instacart, you know, Instacart is bad. Marquis says he had two college students interested in his old opinions on relationship advice. He thought it was strange. Marquis is asking, should I get a dash cam? What do y'all think, team? Yes. 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 Yeah, exactly. Get a dash cam. <laughs> tell, us a tell, tell us a Marquis. story so you can win the gift card so you can get a ga ga dash cam. Yeah, he's actually been um active on the chat. So we're going to go off of the stories in the chat, too. Yeah, even Will, Will Connor says it's a must. Will Connor says for Instacart, no market basket orders. Yeah, you know, you know, market basket, it'll turn you into a basket case real quick. I do have to agree <laughs> with you there. Very Will. busy, very busy. Oh, Marquis oh, says he was being sarcastic. He's an OG. He knows better. You know, he was being sarcastic. Now, you and, finding that the pay for the for the for the uh, grocery shopping is worth the money that it takes for the labor that you have to do to get the groceries in and out to where these people are going. Do you just deliver to the doors or do you deliver inside the house? If you're doing whole foods, if you're doing whole foods delivery, it's definitely worth it. So you want to get as many deliveries as you can for whole foods because they give tips out. So whole foods delivery is good. I'll give it. Can I go next for the advice? So I, the, the advice I can give you is, you know, so, when you do Amazon Flex and you go to the warehouse, they have those big boxes. Well, I have about eight of them. I saved about eight of them. Um, they are good to uh, carry uh, your groceries in. If you have a long uh, way to someone's driveway, you put them in, you can drag them. So those yellow Amazon bags are really, really good to use to make food deliveries um for amazon and then the next tip i can say would be beth is right um if you do the latest delivery sometimes uh, this happened during christmas time for me uh when you do the latest delivery times the amazon flex there was a couple occasions where there was no packages and they let me go you pay my you money paid. yeah i get paid yeah. and then they caught on what they were doing is they'd give me like two packages and they'd give everybody else like two packages um, to keep us, you know, to make it. Um, so yeah. Oh, God. yeah, I know Felipe is driving, so we might have we might have lost in. Signal out there is horrible. Yeah, when you on the road, all this money, let me tell you. So one tip I could say, when you're going, there's a big warehouse in Dedham for the packages. Another thing I would do um, when it was busier, when I wanted to just do package delivery all day, I'm going to put it in the chat, was I would actually show up about five minutes before my shift started for Amazon Flex. And there would be a whole line caravan of cars waiting to get into the place. So I would pull in because in Dedham, right on a Dedham, Hyde Park, Reedville border, 
they have like a fun center, you know, like one of those jumping zones. So you, there's a way you have to let the cars in and out. So I would pull up and actually, I would actually pull up and walk up there and say, I'm here for this shift. And they hadn't gotten to the people that were showing up for the shifts half an hour or 15 minutes or sometimes around the holiday season, even 45 minutes before. So I would have them check me in on my phone. And a lot of times I would spend 45 minutes, half an hour of a three hour, you know, a three hour shift and still get paid for my time. And the lady, one of the ladies had a nerve to tell me, oh, you need to be here like half an hour early. I said, are y'all paying me to be here half an hour early? I said, if you pay me to, I'll show up. So that's another tip too. And pay your kids because for Amazon, um, Will said you can't be shopping with two people could get you deactivated. I know for Amazon, they don't mind if you have people helping you. A lot of people have their partners or they show up with their kids to help them. I know I used to do Uber Eats with my daughter when she was younger and I actually used they, to get more they changed that. They changed that path. I used to, so they changed that. So you can oh, no wow. longer do the deliveries with another person. You can't even go into the Amazon facility with another person. I used to oh, take, wow. believe it or not, wow. yeah, I used to do it on Sundays. I used to take my kids and I used to do like a four hour block and I used to have them watch their TV uh, as I did all the Amazon deliveries because I used to do the one in New Hampshire. But yeah, no longer can you bring someone. You, you can still do that. It's one of your, it's one of your independent contractor rights that you can actually argue for. You have the right to have a, a, um, a hired help if you want to. So they technically you can consider them hired help. <laughs> Not. Okay. I got to quickly, I don't one. mean to interrupt, but I got to interrupt for this story. So Richard, he does DoorDash. He said, this is, is, this might be one of the contenders for the craziest story. He said my third delivery ever with DoorDash the guy answered the door naked and asked me to wait so he could get me a tip. He handed me a $20 bill and started pleasuring himself as I walked back to my car. Oh, I, have that $20 man. $20. I don't believe oh, that. Boy, get this guy on me. camera. Get this Richard guy on camera. Oh, I don't know. I, Richard, I believe it. you want to come on camera, Richard? You want to join the stream? I'm telling you. I'll, I'll see if he wants to, if he's comfortable with that. <laughs> Marquis is over here. And Will says, can't be shopping with two people. Like Felipe said, he says, interesting. Marquis is laughing. Oh, Richard said, yes. Okay. So Richard, could I send it to you through Facebook uh, messenger? All right. We got a door, Let's get Richard we got a door on dash line. driver coming on the stream. Okay. So I'm going to... I don't know why I did that, but to he's going to actually be joining us. The more, the merrier. So, Richard, I just sent it to you on um, on Facebook. OK, so you should be coming on the studio soon into the studio soon. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, another thing I have to say, too, if you have if you have livery plates or if you know have uber you know if you're renting um a livery vehicle if you got grandfathered into uber black lift lux the best thing advice i can give you to start a llc i do ride share through a llc because as we know gas is as expensive you know gas is as high as bobby brown was in the 90s like is like I've seen Cali gas. I've seen like eight dollars a gallon. It's almost four dollars a gallon here. Don't let you need some premium. Don't let you need premium gas. Um, and so it's really, 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 really crazy. And so it's just ridiculous. You can get a gas card. Sign up for business credit. Get your EIN and sign up for business credit. That's another thing that I have. So Dave has using the Ikea bags as 
you know, helping people out and everything. So that's another tip that we have for all the drivers and get insurance too. make sure, make sure you tell your insurance company that you are doing ride share. A lot of insurance companies have well, a you're ride, ask them for a ride, ride share, share adder. Ride share endorsement. Yep. It once you t uh, certain insurance companies once you tell them that you do ride share, they'll cancel you. Well, I know I'm I'm a you have to I ask the am, I'm a veteran, so I have USAA. They have a ride share rider. Progressive has a ride share rider. Um, Mark Abella does. Abella does too. Um, um, Omafra does. Our Bella or Moffitt have an endorser. Yeah, Marquis says gas is higher than a giraffe's coochie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Marquis said. And Will said, I actually think it's required now um, for ride share. You need ride share insurance. Because what people don't know, people think they're getting over by we actually had a driver in the um in Boston Uber and Lyft professional drivers group talk about that. Um, your insurance companies are checking. They have a database now that they share all this information in. And they are checking to see if you are doing rideshare, if you're doing Grubhub, if you're doing all these different other types of gig work. And let me tell you, you don't want to get in an, you really don't want to get in an accident. And then you might think that you're covered. A lot of times there was a um there was an incident with a woman, I think it was a woman. Correct me if I'm wrong, if someone else knows that she thought Lyft would cover her because she wasn't at fault, but it was the other driver. The other driver, they maxed out on their insurance. So you want to make sure that you have the maximum insurance. You also want to get something called Gridwise. And Gridwise is a benefit. If you're in an accident, if you can't work, if you get deactivated, whether it's temporarily, um, you know, they will provide you up to 80% of, you know, 80% of your income. You just have to get a quote. You want to protect your income. And That's just to let people know, BIDG members, you know, we have access. If you're a part of the team, if you're a dues paying that member, choose what you, you know, you know, dues, you pay what you choose member, you actually have access to those benefits as a paid member. You have access to Affleck, you have access to Gridwise, and you being a part of BIDG, you have a discount code. Uh, we have a discount code and we're able to offer our members a free trial, not for one week, but for two weeks. And with Gridwise, people are like, Beth, how are you making five, 1,500 to 2K a week? That was one of the secret sauces was Gridwise. Um, they actually have events going on in other parts of the state in Rhode Island and things like that. And um, that's how I was making more money because you might know about that Red Sox game at Fenway Park or that Patriots game down at Gillette, but there might be a concert up in Lowell that most people don't know about and it has a crazy surge. And it's not a Charlie Fox trot to actually get out of, you know what I mean? I've been to Gillette before. It could take you an hour to get out of that stadium, you know? And it says, how do you guys actually people get reactivated with Uber? And I just want to say, Richard is here. Thank you for coming on to the show and joining the broadcast. Richard is, you know, a dating coach. He does DoorDash as well. And I believe he also does Lyft, but I might be wrong. He could correct me on that. Um, so, and he is like the dating guru, especially for men that don't have the best of luck when it comes for a date to dating. So Will Connor said, how do you guys actually get people reactivated with Uber? So do what- you wanna, Do you want me to take that one? Yes, Felipe, please yes, Felipe, please. So so Uber, we have been very lucky and unlucky in some cases. We actually have Alex's Ink Fangs 
personal cell phone number for work and her email. And I've talked to her personally um, about helping drivers. Uh, one of the things is that a lot of the drivers that are reaching out, they, I don't know if they can even be reactivated. And a lot of them don't want to do the process to go forward. For example, the only person that I know that's gone forward is a gentleman by the name of Lawrence Drucker. Uh, he's in the Facebook group. He actually took the took them to arbitration, but they're doing a lot of, um, we'll just say they're doing a lot of bad stuff. You know what I mean? They're trying, they're trying to do a lot of bad stuff that, you know, not, they don't want to listen to his case. So they, they say we can go through arbitration, but yet they, then they say, oh no, you can't do it. We're not doing arbitration. But it's in our contract and states that we can do arbitration. So, uh, you know, we're trying to send emails to to Alex Angfang, and uh, and we have her number, and she's not being too forthcoming. This is where we need to gain more support from the drivers, so we can put more pressure in a group to our lobby, to our, our legislators our politicians, and even at the coalition in which the Boston Independent Drivers Guild is with, we can put pressure on Uber and Lyft. There's only so much that we can do. I mean, don't forget, that's a multi-billion dollar corporation. And you, you have the Boston Independent Drivers Guild, it's a volunteer based trying to fight against them and um island uh and we, we still have about 50 or 50 people in the pipeline uh that we try we put their information in uh it's not easy i mean you know we try to do it creatively um you know maybe even to a point where we can take them to small claims court you know why can't we take them to small claims court i mean you just got to be willing to fill out the hundred dollar form and have a good plausible uh, lawsuit against them. You know, you know, they, we got to. There's got to be a way in which we can get drivers reactivated. Um, and unfortunately, uh, there's other organizations that are using backdoor techniques, but they're compromising the rights of the drivers. And we don't want to compromise the rights of the drivers. We want to be able to be the voice of the drivers. Um, so, well, you know, I, I know that you, I think you, you were a left advocate at, at some point. Um, who are you talking to? Um, you know, you got to, um, got to make connections. Will was, Will Connor was a left advocate. Oh, okay. Was a, he was a lift. Oh, you mean um, Will. I guess Lyft okay. had a whole bunch of drivers that were helping people back in the day. Oh, okay. And I think mm -hmm. Will Will was one of those guys. I think, okay. or he knows one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that we are also doing is we are actually writing letter letters, and some of the drivers we have been able to get reactivated but it was more a technical issue than a violation of community, you know, what did they say? Community standards, community guidelines. Like it was a clerical error, you know, it was taking too long with their background check, something like that. They had something on their license. And I'm like, did you contact the DPU? Some drivers don't know that you go through two background checks the one with Uber and Lyft and the one with DPU, the Department of Public Utilities. And we can, we write letters. Um, and that's why we say get a dash cam. We also are, you know, we will apply pressure on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, especially on Twitter. Uber does not like to get called out. We have a driver that actually has footage and he said, I have the footage. He's the only driver that filed a deactivation complaint that actually has footage of the incident that happened. Now, how likely do you think and how fast do you think that drive that we're going to be able to get that driver reactivated 
versus someone that does not have a dash cam. That's why we say you need to get a dash cam. Those are some, you know, those are some of the things that we can do. And if worse comes to worse, we can actually, you can actually take them to small claims court and we refer drivers. I just referred a driver the other day to Shan Sledgehammer Shannon, Shannon Liss Reader, to her law firm. She's gotten a lot of money for the drivers because what people don't really talk about is that in Massachusetts, under Massachusetts labor law, we're considered actually employees, even though Uber and Lyft, their business model is not legal and we're treated as independent contractors. So you have more rights under Massachusetts labor law, you know, as, as in because we're considered employees under the law. And so a lot of the drivers don't know this. And so, you know, that's why they say knowledge is power and executing from that knowledge is power. And so, I mean, they, you know, they try to pull that garbage with me. They told me the facial recognition software, it wasn't me. They couldn't get me on customer complaints. And then when I made an appointment, they had someone from their headquarters actually call me from Uber's headquarters in, um, in California instead of actually going to the hub. And I said, I know my rights. This is illegal. I said, you know, I have witnesses that can say this is a picture of me. This is a picture of me. And I said, the studies have shown that facial recognition software misidentifies black and brown people the majority of the time. And 70% of our rideshare drivers are black and brown. So I said, your software doesn't work. I said, I, can, I said, I also have the proof for that. And I was like, you're retaliating against me because I'm organizing the drivers and I'm fighting on behalf of the drivers. And I said, we could do this the easy way or we could do this the hard way. I said, but you know, you're violating my rights one way or the other. And now my account, you know, it doesn't need attention anymore, but I knew my rights and I did not back down. And so a lot of the drivers don't know their rights. So Marquis said, I've been silent for rideshare services since the pandemic. Is it worth coming out of retirement and why? <laughs> um, no, it's definitely not. So. I can tell you this. I've heard so many complaints about how slow it is for rides. I, I have literally transitioned to delivery only right now. So I'll tell you that much. Go with delivery. Stay with it until things pick up. Because right now, it is dead. There is nothing. <laughs> I would say that uh, there's it's sporadic. Depends on where you actually, when, yeah. and, when and where you drive, okay? Because, like, I will drive on a Sunday, and I will go to Boston or something like that, and it will be literally nonstop from, like, 7 o'clock at night till almost. Oh, well, actually, I go in, I'll go in at, say, noontime one o'clock and it'll be non-stop from one until nine ten at night and you literally have to shut it off at 10 o'clock at night because a lot of buses start slowing down and it starts picking up from 10 till six in the morning so night owl hours are always happening but mm -hmm. like beth was saying you can use grid wise um there's a lot of shows there's a lot of theaters um that are pushing people out the door people are not wanting to drive in there they're using ride share there's rallies, there's events, uh, the garden, um, you know, it's what you make of it. Uh, I would not say it's slow. I would say that it can get very busy. Um, and another thing is you should declare where you're driving. If you change. Yeah, Will says he's been busy. Dave is freezing up. So it's almost eight o'clock. And so I'm trying to respect everybody's time. So what I said was get a pepper spray permit, get the gel, get the gel pepper spray. Don't get the aerosol pepper spray because you're going to end up macing yourself. Make sure you carry scissors, especially if you get in an accident. 
And in your upside down, you could cut the seat belt, you could cut yourself out, and you could break the window if necessary, if you need to get it out. You know, Ubers talk about no guns, lift no guns. But you know what they say. A lot of people would rather be judged by 12 than carry by six, you know, carry by six. Um, hand sanitizer, that's actually one of the best weapons of defense right now because you could throw that in someone's face. Um, and it's just like, trust your instincts, get a dash cam, have the signs that you're being recorded. Um, you know... And sometimes you just got to do a Hail Mary, unfortunate, unfortunately. And so put it in your profile, put it in your profile, too, that you yeah. have a dash cam. OK, for the safety and just make sure Register you register it. Make sure you do say that for the safety of all riders and drivers, you know, just put the mm -hmm. riders first because it looks a lot better. You know, there's audio and video taking place and have signs on either either window. And that way you're covered, you know. You, you can only and carry get spare memory cards. So if you do have an incident that you can pop the memory card out, you put another memory card mm -hmm. in because a lot and of them rewrite, rewrite over things. Your own signs too. They're, yeah. They're fairly inexpensive. No, you guys still doing partition. Has anybody done partitions? Yeah, I still have mine. Yeah. A lot of the drivers still have the partitions up when I've been in there. Because I tried to order one and they were on back order. So, go to compasshealthshields.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Beth, are we having another meeting at eight? Yeah, that's why I'm wrapping up. I'm on number four. So my tips are, you know, protect yourself and your income. Sign up for Gridwise. Sign up for Aflac. Just to let you know, like I said, BIDG members, we, you know, do choose what you pay what you choose dues paying members, you know, what you feel comfortable with, you know, we have, we have that discount code. We have a direct link to an Aflac expert and Aflac covers that's cancer it covers you. It covers your family. Um, you know, it's important because you can get deactivated. Someone could accuse you of anything and these bills don't stop. And we, we all know that, you know, you can take a vacation, but not from the bills. So just protect yourself, your family, your income. And then I'm going to actually put up, sign, you know, sign up for BIDG. Um, and I'm going to post that link in here. If you have any questions for us, you know, we are here for you. And from there, you can see what we're doing. You can, you know, you can sign up for dues if you have a deactivation issue. You know, I put I that in the chat. Marquis says thank he yeah, appreciates you. all your advice. This was awesome. Um, so I posted it on the Facebook page and I posted it on our YouTube page and everything. And so the last thing we have, it is 759. And we do have another meeting to get to. Like I said, we are fighting for you guys, the drivers. There's a lot of changes that DoorDash, Uber, and Lyft are trying to do. They're trying to buy a law that is basically is you think we barely, you know, we don't have any rights now. If this passes, this Prop 22 passes, and this legislation, HB 1234, you really not going to have any rights. And you might as well bend over and take it every day, any which way. And so we're fighting for you. Some of y'all drivers might not know um, what's going on, but we just want to keep you informed. And so we're going to vote, Steve, Dave, and I, who do you think had the craziest story for... Um, for Rising. Who do you think? Um, I put in for Richard. To me, Richard had the best, craziest story that I've Oh, ever yeah. Had without a doubt, Richard. I definitely yeah. say without a doubt. Bill one. That's the best. And Steve has a tip for your income compass health shield. Um, no, and no, no, also. No. That's, that's the, um, the, the partition. Mm -hmm. So that's the partition. And just one more thing before we get going. Any of y'all, they mess with you, Uber and Lyft mess with you, 
you know, you get in these, you know, you get in an accident, especially if it's not your fault. You know, we got, we also put an Uber lawsuit in here because let me tell you, um, that's Sledgehammer Shannon. And if you, you know, she gets money for drivers. She has helped a lot of drivers. HTTPS uberlawsuit.com. She'll help you. Um, you know, she is one of the best labor law attorneys, not only in Massachusetts, not only in Boston, but in the whole country. Like Uber and Lyft, big tech is scared of her. They ain't going to admit it, but they really are. They, they're, sh they're shaking their boots when they hear her name. Um, so thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, I did the, thank you, Steve. I did the uberlawsuit.com. So once again, Richard, you are the winner of the $25 Visa gift card. Hit me up. You know, Richard doesn't live too far away. And so we are just going to end this broadcast. We do have another meeting to go to. Thank you everyone for tuning in and have a great evening. Okay. And thank you for staying with us, even with the technical difficulties. We appreciate your patience. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Did a good job. Bye, everyone. Nice. Have a good night. Yeah.